That's a commitment. Hey there, Nomads of Lore. I'm Jonathan. And I'm Sean. And together we are Mead and Mischief, your home away from no home. And today we're going to talk about how to properly start a fantasy series. That's a commitment. <laughs> How does a writer get a reader to read and commit to a full-on fantasy book series at this point? That is the question mm -hmm. that we're going to be talking about today uh, using our beautiful example of The Way of Kings and kind of going through some of it and, mm -hmm. and discussing points. So, Speaking of beautiful, uh, I know that we're talking to a bunch of old people or people that are too old and aren't even around anymore, but... People don't like to be called e old. Example of high-quality cover art as compared to the Robert Jordan's cover art of The Wheel of Time. Shots the OG. fired. Not that that's a hot take. I, I know. I know. <laughs> you know, there it yeah. is. <laughs> well, anyway. So this, this, this book not only has a prologue that's not 17 hours long like other books that I just got finished reading, but it also has a prelude. That prelude is only three and a half pages long, and I would be surprised. Well, this we'll, we'll just say this. This book series would not be for you if you had not fallen in love with it definitely by the end of the prologue, if not by the end of the prelude, which is only three and a half pages. And so we're going to kind of talk about that, what is so amazing about this prelude, kind of break it down into a few little points, and yeah, yeah. let's get started. One of the ways that this three-ish page prelude sets the reader up for success and really hooks the reader really early is through a really simple framing device. Hmm. That fra <coughs> framing device is a really straightforward conversation with just two people. The, uh, the author, not the author, the author probably knows a lot more at this, uh, at this point than we do, but the reader only has to remember two, maybe three names at this point. Now, we're thrown, we are, we are, do see some new words. We hear about shard blades and oath pacts and, and these, these different things and desolations and, and all these words. We get a lot of words throw in, mm. but because of context, because of that, we get a easy way to understand things. I, I find fantasy, it reminds me of Lewis Carroll. If you've ever read Through the Looking Glass by Lewis Carroll, which is a sequel, if you don't know, to Alice in Wonderland. I won't go too far into this. But, you know, it contains the nonsense verse Jabberwock. You know, you get these weird phrases with all these weird weird words, twas brillig and the slithy toves, and, you know, and you get all this stuff. And just like Alice at the end of that poem, mm -hmm. and knowing, oh, well, I don't know quite what happened, but I know somebody killed a monster and something, you know, something, it turned out good in the end. We don't really know what's going on, but we're able through a really simple device to understand, to get a feel for what is going on and get some interest that it was some of the things that we're going to talk about in a minute. So the second way that this prelude really draws the reader in is through poignant imagery. Mm -hmm. And so there's three little sections that we're going to discuss. First of all, we've got the the part where Kalak comes up before he even talks to Jezrean and he sees the seven blades in the ground already mm -hmm. and is really confused as to why there's mm -hmm. there's one still missing. He knows yeah. that Jezrean has his. He's coming and, from a battle. Yeah, he's mm -hmm. coming from a battle and he's mm -hmm. like, what, are, what what is going on here? And so w let's read that real quick. We've got Kalak found himself shaking. When did he become so weak? Jezrean, I can't return this time. Collect whispered the words, stepping up and gripping the other man's arm. I can't. And so he's basically, before even having this conversation with, uh, with Jezrean, he's given up. He's like, I'm done. And of course, we know what come, follows after that is Jezrean actually saying to him that we've already decided All that we're not coming us. back mm -hmm. and that we're going to leave uh, Talon, <laughs> Talon's sword. We're going to leave Talon here to... to to fight yeah. without us. We don't know what that means. It's yeah. all gobbledygook. Exactly. Somebody is suffering terrible yeah. somewhere. Yeah. And so then we go on to to talk about the description that he himself has gone through many times. Mm -hmm. And now we know Tom what is, Tallinn is going to have mm -hmm. to go through many times on his own now. And it's basically a hell on earth kind of description. And Tallinn, Kalek asked, the flesh burning, the fires, the pain over and over and over. 
Better that one man should suffer than ten, Jezreen whispered. So th this imagery that we're going through is really collects three-part struggle. You know, he's got he's got his own giving up. He's got a revisiting of what what is going on, and then of course the, the third part is as he's leaving, he looks back to see the the nine blades now that are in the ground and realizing the one that he's left and Taln and 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 let me read that part. It's crazy, 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 Good crazy. Stuff. Good stuff. Yep. And yet he could not help gla glancing back at the ring of swords and the single open spot, the place where the tenth sword should have gone, the one of them who was lost, the one they had abandoned. Forgive us, Collect thought. And then he left. Mm -hmm. Or then left. Don't want to miss, don't want to miss, uh, represent. Anyway. <laughs> but uh, that, that ending is just so, I guess you want to see the front? Sorry. <laughs> that ending is just, it, it leaves you with such intrigue mm -hmm. and such mystery. And there's, there's so many points of, of tone and, and things that are going on that you don't really understand. Like, like Sean said, there's so much going on because of these different words. You don't really know what shard blades are. You don't know what the oath pact is. We don't know who these heralds are or what they're doing or what their cause is or what they're leaving behind and who's going to, what terribleness is coming for the world. Mm -hmm. But we know that we're, we're intrigued. Something is terrible. Yeah. yeah. So this, so those two things in that they set up several things very succinctly, quickly. They set up the tone that is this, this bleak world mm -hmm. of <laughs> hopeless hopefulness. It's kind of we it's this weird juxtaposition. Like their mm. their hope is like good this tall person, whoever he is, right, is stuck in this terrible thing, and all of this is happening. And the, so they're hoping kind of cross your fingers and your toes and your arms, maybe he'll be able to keep something at bay, right? Yeah. And yeah. so we've got this we which also creates mystery and it creates we we get you know that that end the the I I'm sorry you you feel in that with this with this tiny little bit that he's saying I'm sorry to Tong but you feel in in our opinion that it's not just I'm sorry to him but I'm sorry to all of Roshar and this, mm. you know, we're, mm. we're walking away from some duty, mm -hmm. keeping something terrible from happening. So you get mm -hmm. at stakes and mystery. You also get a little, you get this backstory that rides in the back of your mind as you, as you see all this more modern time stuff in the rest of the book. And it does all of this with so little and it's really, really, really good. As we've seen through views and through you guys and the comments and everything, traditional book reviews on our channel are not, you know, something that you guys are super interested in. And that may change over time, but for now, we're going to just do a very short book review right here in this in this very video. <laughs> if you like epic fantasy, if you like big worlds, compl complex magic systems, and intriguing, relatable, complex characters, mm -hmm. and characters who are intriguing—not just not just protagonists that are intriguing, but antagonists and side characters mm -hmm. who are very, very cool and and interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and so, if you like those things, we really, really recommend this book. Sean, of course, is a lot further in this in all of this Cosmere stuff than I am, and he doesn't necessarily think that this is the first book you should start with. I don't know but yet, it could be. but it could be. Mm -hmm. And um, anyway, so we are going to do, or Sean is going to do a reading list, Cosmere, what, how you should read it and how you should go through it. Mm -hmm. So what do you guys think? If, you've, if you have read in the Cosmere, what's the first book you should start with? That's, that's our question to you. Mm -hmm. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Yep. We, uh, we very much appreciate your support and all the awesome comments. You guys have a wonderful afternoon, evening, whatever time of day it is, wherever you're at. <laughs> Peace right. out. Bye-bye.